So, meet Louise de Lavalier, the lady with whom the Count of Bragelon was in love in the Dumas novel. She is only 17 years old and we will see the legendary court of the Sun King through her eyes. Before the reign of Louis XIV, the residence of the French monarchs was the Louvre. But the king, named the God-given, decided to build a new palace in the suburbs of Paris and made it the most brilliant palace in Europe, spending a tremendous amount of money. Now, the king is 23 and he is in love with 17-year-old Louise de Lavalier. But let's try to figure out if she was lucky or not. Imagine Louis XIV in love, the brilliant king, the quarters hang on his every word and immediately spread it all over Europe. He is kneeling before our protagonist, squeezing her hands, begging for a kiss. And now let's try to imagine what the lady felt at this moment. The king was not handsome. His face was disfigured by smallpox. In addition, poor Louis XIV had terrible teeth for almost all his life and had bad breath. By the age of 40, he had only shapeless roots left. At the same time, the Sun King was full of love. Considering servility at court, the position of the lady who won the king's attention was very difficult. Resist? No one had courage or desire to do this. Give in? But that meant to get compromised. In addition, all the details of your intimate meeting would be immediately disclosed throughout Europe. Every word of the Song King, every smile, every look, every statement was discussed and commented by the court. To declare his love to our protagonist, Louise de Lavalier, the king had to arrange ballets, dress up as a shepherd, she played a shepherdess, and then in front of 5,000 courtiers, he could confess his love to her, following the text of a commissioned play. Our protagonist stands out from all the countless favorites, because she really seemed to love the king, unfortunately. She wasn't pretty either, and she limped after she had fallen off her horse. Her face was pockmarked. Here is how a contemporary described her. She is intelligent, lively, has the ability to judge things sensibly, is well-mannered, is great at history, she is gifted with a tender, compassionate heart. What was the daily life of the most brilliant court in Europe? Despite its splendor, the castle was completely deprived of the comforts. It was very beautiful and terribly cold. In Versailles, some of the fireplaces didn't function. Not all the windows were closed and the doors slammed over and over because of drafts. But it wasn't the only problem. According to eyewitnesses, the air of Versailles was also harmful because of sweat and breath of many people, it was extremely stale. The palace had a kind of public lavatories, but often their condition was so terrible that some of the inhabitants of Versailles relieved themselves in a quiet corner. But our protagonist, Louise de Lavalier, fell in love with Louis and was ready to put up with all this. But life or show was the hardest for her. The king's life consisted of a long list of ceremonies, most of them took place in public. Courtiers appeared in his bedroom in the morning, their number could reach up to 100 people. They were arranged in a certain order, depending on the rank, and a footman began the shaven procedure, which was observed by the guests. Moreover, the nobles had the honor of seeing the king dressing up. After that, he left his bedroom. And now, imagine what it was like for our protagonist, Louise de Lavalier. She suffered the humiliation of being watched 24 hours a day, was hated by the queen and envied by her rivals.
Louise was ashamed of her love and didn't dare to leave her head. She gave birth to four king's children, and immediately after birth, still dazed, half dead from weakness, she was forced to go to the court party to stop the malicious gossip with her presence. And even in the church she had no peace. She had to listen to preachers blaming her for her scandalous behavior and pointing fingers at her. And she had to listen all this with a poker face, with a proud posture. Louise went to a convent several times, but when the king asked her to come back, she felt unable to refuse her lover and returned to this hell after all. She didn't know what was coming. One day, our protagonist, Louise de Lavalier, fell ill suddenly and seriously, so that she was afraid that she had been poisoned. On another occasion, the murderers had crept up on her balcony at night. She heard them trying to open the shutters and ran away in her sleepwear to the maid's room. The position of Louise deteriorated greatly after the appearance of a new favorite, Antony de Montespan. But she loved Louis deeply and endured everything. Louise accepted his infidelity and even agreed to become a servant to her triumphant rival and dress her up for the dates. Now she had to play the role of a screen. The king, upon his return from hunting, went into Louise's to potter himself and change his dress and went to his new mistress. All this was so humiliating, but she kept enduring. Finally, one day, her life among those heartless people became unbearable, and Louise finally decided to go to a monastery to forget forever about the cruel court of Versailles. But she wasn't allowed to leave the palace just like that. The court wanted to get enough of her torment. She had a title of duchess, so she was obliged to behave in accordance with her rank. She had to put on her formal dress and throw herself at the feet of the queen who hated her, begging for forgiveness. Before her departure, she was forced to dine with her naughty rival, who only pretended to be compassionate. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Oh, and click on the bell so you get notified when the new episode comes out.